are tuning in to the Todo Latino Show from Pro Audio LA Studios. I am Joey D, and I'm my co-hosting with me today, none other than Cosmo Latina, a long member of Todo Wafi Familia. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, aquí. Feliz de estar de regreso. After <laughs> not being an uh, on-air personality for a long time, doing a lot of behind the scenes, but getting ready for Revolución 2024. Yes. So we want to thank our one of our greatest sponsors, Global Processing System, the official merchant of 2024 Revolución Festival, now that you mention it. Our guests are Latina Fest founders, Bell Hernandez Castillo and Naive Reynoso. Welcome, ladies. Welcome. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you so and much. I'm going to start giving you flowers. So I'm going to start with Naive, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Naive. Naive. Naive, multi Emmy award winning journalist, speaker, and author, an anchor reporter of LA County, channel producer, and Emmy nominated show host. In 2018, she founded Con Todo Press, a publishing company that creates books to amplify the voices of underrepresented communities. And her first children's book highlights 11 women who excel in medicine, science, sports, the arts, journalism, and politics. Take it over. And along with <laughs> Naive, we have <laughs> Bel Hernandez Castillo. <coughs> she is the founder, CEO of Latin Media a multimedia company that concentrates on so many things in the entertainment industry. She was dubbed in the 90s as the godmother or madrina of Latino Hollywood mm -hmm. by Movie Maker Magazine for helping expand Latino filmmakers' presence. She was awarded for her journalism from the National Council of La Raza back when it was still that. Now it's called Unid Os for her 20-year-plus contributions to the entertainment community. She is currently serving as the chair of the Farm Worker Justice Advisory Council. And in 2021, she began working on the credentialing committee of the Hollywood Foreign Press, a.k.a. Golden Globes in the house. <laughs> Excellent. Bienvenidas. Gracias. So we always going to start the show by, you know, how it all became, how it all started, an origin story. So my first question will be, what is Latina Fest and what is its purpose? And what would you add? that people still don't know about it today. Well, Latina Fest is a festival, an outdoor festival that celebrates all things Latina. It happens in downtown Los Angeles at a beautiful venue where multi-generational Latinas can go and enjoy food, our food, our music, our fashion, right? Our cultural products. Um, we have an author's corner, we have a cocktail garden, we have a DJ, we have a dance class, we have inspirational panels. So tenemos un poco de todo para todas, and everyone's invited. It's kind of like a one-stop shop of a Latina wonderland. Yes, it's it's like walking into <coughs> Latina land. You know, Disneyland, this is Latina land. Uh, because <laughs> it, 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 everything that we do speaks to who we are. And there is, um, it's the only outdoor festival where we are basically catering to Latinas who are upwardly mobile, who are bilingual, bicultural, and multi-generational. And they really enjoy seeing their themselves and their culture reflected back, whether, like Naiva said, whether it's in the products that are selling, the speakers that are there, the, the people that they meet. And that's what it is. We, we wanted a place where it wasn't sectioned you know, like just for business women. It wasn't just for mommies. It wasn't, we said, we, we are familia. That's the way Latinos are. We're all about familia, and this is for all the familia. So you see the babies, you see the grandmas, you see the tias, you see everybody there. Yeah. Everybody. It's like a fiesta casera. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> and, and I wanted to add that sometimes the Latina experience is that we feel excluded in so many different categories, yes. right? So we wanted to make sure at Latina Fest, nobody felt excluded. It's not just a festival for influencers or just for media or just for entrepreneurs because we are tired of feeling excluded. We want everyone to feel like they're welcome, including la abuelita, la bisabuelita, la comadre. Todas. Every age is welcome and there's mm -hmm. something there for everybody. That's fabulous. Like from a diversity perspective, that is amazing. Yeah. I, I also know, Having grown up in L.A., not being Mexican, <laughs> 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 I 
how a lot of things can be called Latino or Latina something or other, and yet you get there and it's still like super Mexican, which I appreciate having grown up here. <laughs> what do you say to those that say, oh, okay, yeah, it's going to be Latina, but like maybe it's like still like super Mexican? Like what other communities are represented or how are you intentional about having that pan Latina experience also represented there? Well, you have to understand that Mexicans are 66% of the whole Latino population. And we're in LA. This is where it's Mexican. This is where almost 50% of the population. So, you know, when we say Latina Fest, we didn't say Mexican Fest. We said Latina Fest. But the people that come are, uh, they're, they're not just Mexican, but a lot of them are because that's the majority. But we do have within our circle, I mean, the, the vendors, we have Salvadoran food, we have uh, people that, that sell things that bring our artesanías from Guatemala or different, different places. So it is that. And this year, what we are adding is the Afro-Latina because of the panels, because you ladies Yay. will be there. <laughs> and, yes, and, you know, it's... It's it. We are Afro Latinas, you know. Even in Mexico, there's Afro Latinos. There, we're everywhere, and so that that's an element that we do want to highlight. I mean, they've been there. I mean, one of the actresses that was in um, uh, Orange Is the New Black, superhero woman. That the oh, right, right, right. Yes, Lorena Jorge is yeah. her name. Lorena Jorge. She's Afro Latina, and she's been there. She's you know she's she's uh, been highlighted there. And so it's not that we haven't included them. This this year we're highlighting them in the panels, mm. which, by the way, the panels are new. We've not really had panels. What we usually have is we interview someone on stage uh, for the Trend Talk. But this year we're having panels, which you will be part of the media panel. We're also having a sports panel. We're having a wealth panel, like stepping into your wealth panel. You really actually answered my question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I was about to ask you, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. And uh, uh, the other panels are the ladies of Lopez, who are the ladies from the show, the NBC TV show, Lopez and Lopez. So the showrunner, Debbie Wolf, will be there. Uh, Selena Sleva, who plays the mom, and Mayan Lopez, who's George Lopez's daughter, who plays the lead. She will be there as well. And then we have a panel that's called the Latina Disruptors. Mm -hmm. And oh, in that everybody's yes, buzzing I about know. that one. Like <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. That's, who, that's who we are. We're disrupting yeah. the norm. And the norm is that we're not included. Well, we are included. And this panel will be two of the founders of Latinas Acting Up, which yes, they like, started. Yeah, 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 you yeah. saw that, right? Yeah, no, I was like, yeah. wait, like Lisa's going to be there, Diana's going to be there. Yes. <laughs> and, and again, Lisa is Puerto Rican and Diana is uh, Dominican. And mm -hmm. she's Afro, also both of them yep. are Afro Latina. So you know, so we're we're really excited about about that representation that we're adding. And I think that this is we've we've done the festival, and everybody loves the festival. Now we're adding like a lot of you know, uh, like ingredients. Sazon. A <laughs> lot of sazon. There you go. And and because you know we're very opinionated, we love to talk about who we are. We love to <laughs> to promote our each other, and we yeah. like to like state. This is what I think, and so I think that's going to be grand. The panels. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. And when you decided to make it happen in March, what was that? How you guys, you know, how you guys came uh, came along in putting this idea together? Because it's been a while since the festival took, you know, place and was created. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah. So, Bell's background and my background are both in media. Mm -hmm. We're both you know, journalists, and I've been a host for many years and a reporter for many years, and Bell started a talk show uh, when she invited me because it's kind of like that saying, if they don't invite us to the table, build your own table, right? Build so, like, table. for The View, for example, which has been so popular for many, many, many years, there weren't any Latinas. Of course, now there's two Latinas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I love Ana Navarro um, and Sunny Hostin. Uh -huh. yes. um, but back then... There weren't any Latinas on major talk shows, national talk shows. So Belle, being the pioneer that she is in media, decided to start her own. And she gracefully invited me to be part of that panel, right, of, of hosts for the for the show. Um, the show started evolving. We Then we kind of just broke out and it was just Belle and I. And we just thought of an idea of like, 
well, first of all, we started to interview entrepreneurs, Latina entrepreneurs, and we noticed like they weren't getting a lot of attention from media. They weren't getting a lot of platforms where they could talk about their businesses. Secondly, the show itself needed a little bit more buzz, right? Okay. Um, so we kind of thought like, what can we do to like get more sponsors or get more attention, et cetera. So that's how Latina Fest was born, but I'll, I'll let you take it from well, there. We, 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 <laughs> we, have, we have the show and, and it's been done for the, the six years at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, which oh, is right okay. across the street from Olvera Street. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we they have so many th events there. And mm -hmm. we were at an event that Naiba saw, and she said, look, 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 they're doing a podcast on stage. Mm -hmm. And then she said, wouldn't it be great if we did the talk show episode there? Again, we're thinking we're going to do this this event and we're going to invite women. Those That's who our main audience is. So that's mm -hmm. that's how it started. Mm -hmm. And then I remember when we, we talked to La Plaza and we said, oh, we would like to do this here. And then they asked us, well, how many people do you think you're going <laughs> to expect? And I think I said, said 300. Three or three or maybe 500. <laughs> that was the answer. And that was 1,500 the first year. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. And then we the next year was 25. And then the next year was COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. So we we pivoted and we did a, a, a entrepreneurship like online. We did a virtual. I actually took the opportunity to check it out, and it was really really nice. What how you Thank guys put you. it together, you know, you. with with these resources that we had at the time. Mm -hmm. Right, but right. it came out really really good. I took Thank a chance you. to, you know, all everybody that was um, displayed and you know show their business and uh, the interaction was very great and cool and the, and there also was an afro latina director did you yes, see that part yes i saw yeah, that part because uh, she did the the documentary on uh, stacy abrams, abrams. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. yeah so we you know everybody got interviewed you know because that that's what we had we, could, we couldn't be out there right and so it, it was like to me like the home shopping network <laughs> <laughs> because it's like what do you do and blah 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 and they would say and then yeah you know you can buy my stuff here's my uh, my uh, Instagram or whatever so it was fun it, yeah. was, it was it was yeah. very interactive very very approachable very I was I was watching and it was like quite content wise diverse you know elevated and it was really inspiring it very mm. much I was very inspired by that oh, wonderful after everything you've told us about where the festival or how it started where, how it's grown, how you've pivoted. Share your vision for Latina Fest over the next five years. I mean, you started at <laughs> 1500. So yeah. I mean, it's only going to come up from here. <laughs> yeah. So I personally, and, and Bell and I, you know, we're business partners. And that uh, is a feat in and of itself to be in a partnership for six years now. Yeah. And survive the partnership <laughs> this long. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, you know, it's it's been a lot of of growing pains, but I think we are, tr you know, we are we're on the same page as far as like where do we see it? And I I want to see it become the biggest go to festival for all things Latina every year. I want I would love for it to grow to two days, possibly even three days, and in start incorporating a concert into the into Latina Fest at the end, you know, mm -hmm. towards the end because we are. Latina Fest stops at six, but like after that, it's after hours and let's party, right? Let's yeah. we, we love music. Yeah, they want more. So yeah, just like have it grow. I really like what we have going on now with the panels, with the vendors, with the food, with the author's corner, with yoga. We have paint and sip, we have cocktail garden. So keeping those elements, but incorporating more days, incorporating, like I said, a band or like music concert let's bring in you know carol g hello yeah. let's manifest that let's manifest i don't know if you uh, if you ladies are familiar with uh, the uh, essence festival yes, yes. okay of course. Yes. that's what i see oh, i mean let's yeah. make that yes. uh, which mm -hmm. goes along with what naiva was saying the concerts you know yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and and also um w we have a powerful and a great opportunity for um, the bigger sponsors to yes. come on board. And I want to tell you guys, come on board now, because right now, you yes. Yes. Right 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 I'm like, SoFi Stadium, you want to get in now? <laughs> SoFi yeah. Stadium? Exactly. Yeah. If you want to get in now, because we are a consumer, uh, a business to consumer. Our attendees are, for the most part, 
consumers. They're the ones that watch the television shows. They're the ones that buy everything that we have to offer there. There's a lot of places where it's B to B, you know, and it's an industry event and they talk to industry and and that's great. But we are we have your your consumers, you know, and ladies, the Latinas are a, a force to be reckoned with, as I'm sure you know. You know, because if we as a community have a $3.2 trillion buying power, that if we Latinos in the U.S. were a country, we'd be the fifth largest country. Yes. That's what Who I was about to Who makes the decisions <coughs> yeah. in, the, in a familia, in a Latina familia? Give mostly, us those numbers, Bill. Yeah. Yes. Mostly those it's the women. Yeah. The women. Yep. And we're 18% of the beauty uh, consumerism. That's oh, Latinas. Yes. <laughs> so yes, it's my like closet. <laughs> <laughs> clothing, <laughs> makeup, yeah. all that. All the products. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's what's really different is like we bring the consumer to you. So we really want to be able to grow and also to further, you know, steps to get to essence level. Yes. Um, we want to also grow the festival out into the street. Get you know, as you say that, honestly, this is all I, I picture. Is like we take over Inglewood. There's the IMAX, Sinopolis is right there, and then the YouTube theater is there. SoFi Stadium is there. The form, oh, it's wow. all that row. Yeah, man, wow. come on, Latinas, like we yeah. can do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, we can. We can. <laughs> but you know, you know what frustrates me is that Bell and I are doing this by ourselves yeah why wow. why aren't we getting corporate spon sponsorships that believe in our vision yeah we have been knocking on doors we have been emailing it's not like we're just waiting for them to come to us we have been emailing right and it's very frustrating because to me this is a reflection of what's going on as nationwide. you know nationwide mm -hmm. not just with a festival but with anything when but latinas when, want an opportunity yeah, like right how many mm -hmm. tv shows have been canceled oh when it, it comes to created by us but <coughs> are we being supported by us too correct by the right community? but i do want to say that chase this is will be chase's fourth except year except for chase he yes. they've been our champions for they the past have been 3 our years champions because they started like this will be their fourth time that they are the title sponsor mm -hmm. and they saw something in our in our festival and they said this is w what we want to support because it the heart of the festival are your entrepreneurs that are there vending they're the ones that come and they invented like a new you know Marindo, whatever, and, <laughs> yeah, and the purses and the clothing and the big earrings, and it's all like related to, to our culture. Yes. So they saw that. They saw that this was a chance to, to connect with the entrepreneurs. And so they came on board and we're really grateful to them, you know, mm -hmm. but they're one company. We, we need more because we can't grow until we have, we, we have the, the funding. Right. But right. they saw the value <coughs> on mm -hmm. being connected and you guys being that resource to put it together, yeah. you know, with the community and say, hey, this is what's going on. And you, you know? know what's interesting right. this year, right, Naibe? The brands reached out to us. Nice. Oh, like yeah. we have yes. new, you Neutrogena. See, to me, that's smart. That's smart. A brand that's smart and knows the numbers because you have to be driven they're not driven by like oh they do such a pretty thing let's do it no they're driven by like oh latinas we want to reach them because they buy a lot of like i just said the beauty products right so neutrogena reached out to us you know and several you know uh other brands have reached out to us that's that's when we know we're really getting traction but uh, it took six years right mm -hmm. meanwhile it was like you know with <laughs> tape and chicle, we're pasting everything yes. together. Yeah, bring yes. all the primos and the primas. Yes. <laughs> yes. What was the, fir the first one, right? The first event that we had, the, the very first Latina yeah, Fest, we were like all dressed up in our outfits and everything, <laughs> and then and it's over, right? And so we have a picture of Naive and I, like we had to bring go on stage and start bringing all of the decorations down. In, we had trajes. Trajes. in, in our And we had this big and full makeup because <coughs> everyone left and it's like her and I are the claro. founders, right? Yeah. If we if we don't do it, no yeah. one else the is going to do it. No, the yeah. the yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Right. And so we we're there with a big ladder like <laughs> pushing it up and it's it's hilarious, but you know, it's we've also had people who have started to come, you know, to to help. Right. And we do have like volunteers that come and and so it is that community, but again, you know, it's not like uh, their employees. We we can't afford the employees yet. Mm -hmm. right. But you know, a, a lot of the Latinas come out and they support by by being in the fashion show, by volunteering, 
by helping us before, um, you know, with little things that we need to do. So we are being supported by some of the Latinas that, that come and help, and by you, because you're, we're here and you're talking about this, right. and that's helping us. So is that what inspired you to really kind of like craft it every year? Every year, like, you know, when you guys sit down and say, okay, que vamos a hacer? what are you guys going to come up with every year? Words that strive that energy, you know, that motivation, too. Oh, my gosh. I ask myself that every single year. <laughs> <laughs> like, do I really want to do this again? And I cannot say no. I can't. I just feel like there's so much potential there, and I don't want to give up on my community because – we are doing this at the end. Like, Belle and I, if we charged an hourly rate for the amount of hours that oh, we put in, I I that, that, <laughs> that putting Latina Fest together would have, like, we would be get paying, getting paid in the six figures Absolutely. if yeah. you yeah. count yes. the hours. Yes. Yes. And Real talk. the experience that we have and what our value is, right, as far as sweat equity. But it's just, personally, I've also made so many connections just by, like, meeting, like, the yeah. people we've met, yeah, it's like, who am I going to meet next year? Who, you know, we've met so many amazing women that we are still friends with, that we go to events with, that we connect with, that we commiserate with. And I don't want to lose that. It's just beautiful. And that happens with everybody that goes there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'll Tapping see. on the resources. Mm -hmm. and, and that they connect. Like all the, the vendors, they talk to each other and then they go off and do things on their own mm -hmm. or they have, they make events, you know, once they get together. It happens with everybody there. You, you cannot help but meet somebody mm. and then, you know, from there start friendships, whether right. you're an attendee or whether you're a vendor or a sponsor, even mm. sponsors, you know, because that's what the sponsors are there for. They're there to connect with the community and they definitely do that. They and, definitely connect. And does Latina Fest itself do anything to continue those conversations and connections are there because i know you have a mixer coming up on monday or the, are yeah. there other events where also people can come and maybe get involved for latina fest next year yeah. so do you keep that up throughout the year we have that we have done events you know um between in between and we're doing more now like the first year we we did an event called stepping into your badass and it was a panel. <laughs> it was a <laughs> title. <laughs> like, sign me up. <laughs> right, right. And it was a panel of women, business women, who had something to offer to everybody else. And so we, it was a brunch. We all sat around and, and had mimosas and yeah. brunch. And, and, and then we talked. So we had that. Uh, we're doing more events. Like, for instance, you know, the, the, the mixer that we're having. Um, we're doing an, another event with Chase, which you're all invited to come. Thank it's you. on uh, the fifth, 14th, no, the 13th. Mm. It's on March 13th. Go to our um, Instagram and, you know, get in there and uh, make sure you sign up. Yes. And Chase that's member. <laughs> Probably yes. bank with Chase. Nice. All right. Good. And this good, is good. For, for... So do we. <laughs> <laughs> this is for business women who need a grant. And a lot yeah. of us don't know the what funding, to do. Funding, we and we don't right. know what to do or, or what to say yes. or how to put it. So this will be a class on how to write a really wonderful, you know, grant proposal. Which yeah. Naiba is very successful. I mean, I've gotten grants, but she's like the queen of I got a TikTok grant. Graciendo no. con TikTok. I've gotten nice. one from Alibaba. I don't know if you've heard of oh, yes. Alibaba. Oh. I lived in Hong Kong. I oh. Alibaba everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically the Amazon of Yes, yes. <laughs> So, so she she'll be on the panel because yeah. she's she's ha had success at securing more than just one, and a lot of us Latinas we're afraid to to try. Yeah. We're like, oh, you they're not going to give it to me. You know, right. I'm just forget it. You know, I don't have what's this financial stuff. I, I don't know anything about that. Forget it. But you have to try it, and then you know. And so this is what that panel is going to be like. So we do do things in between. We're also thinking of doing a wellness retreat. Maybe, mm. you know, to, uh, what is it, our partner that we met at, Let that she came to Latina Fest, Gina. I will, I will sponsor all yeah, the oils, you know aromatherapy, like <laughs> I will sponsor. I'm going to tell okay, you right awesome. now. Awesome. <laughs> all about aromatherapy. Is that your biz that business? Is, well, that is one of, but wow. personal wellness, I incorporate nice. it in my life. Yeah, See, absolutely. you should, you should have been it. at Latina Fest with all the oils. Because <laughs> yeah. we have a magia zone. <clears throat> and the magia oh, zone is going to be like massages and meditation. Oh, Reiki. Reiki. And, Reiki. And, and Reiki. We have yeah. Reiki. <clears throat> and then um, also the, the curanderas doing like, you mm. know, yeah. the Limpias. cleansing. Limpias. Yeah. Oh, Limpias. Yes. Mm. Yeah. 
So, you know, it's it's a variety. And of, like I said, it's a it's a Latina Disneyland. Yeah. yeah. And we actually have a fun fun run jog walk. Yes, event. yes maybe just talk about that. So that's March 16th. Mm -hmm. Uh for us it was it's so important to incorporate wellness, right? And one way that we're like how can we get together and like just, you know, do something fun together. So we decided to do this fun run, but it's like fun run, walk, jog, like you don't have to walk, run. Walk, jog, and talk. <laughs> and talk. you know, some of us just oh, want to walk and cheese me out. It's called yes. the cheese me maraton. Yeah. Cheese <laughs> maraton. Cheese maraton. Cheese maraton. So, yeah, it's happening. It's free March 16th in a park in downtown Los Angeles. We have a sign up sheet in our link in bio. You sign up and we will email you all the information. Yeah, and, and our whole, whole title is Latina Fest, Mind, Body, and Soul. Mm -hmm. So we're about that. We're about the mind, you know, it's the entrepreneurs and learning. We're about the, the body, you know, and keeping our body, and also our soul and the meditation. Right. And it, that makes a complete person without, you know, addressing all of the different areas that we need to. May I ask you, do you guys have anything going on online meanwhile the festival is going to at this, no. at this time? Well, we, yeah. Well, what, who has it? Mm -hmm. You want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, so we partnered with a company called Who Has It? And Who Has It? What they do is they do swag bags for the Grammys, for any like parties. And they have a group of women or with, or men just businesses that have, you know, new products that they want to promote. So they do gift bags and they're doing something like what we did for Entrepreneur Fest, but they're going to be at Latina Fest. There's, we've selected 15 of our vendors who are going to be part of this. They're going to have a booth and they're going to have three, three cameras and it's going to be an interview show. And so they're, you're going to sit there and they're going to interview you and, you know, talk about your journey like we did in Entre Entrepreneur Fest. However, the key here is that they're going to have a, they're going to live sell. So mm. it's going to go out to kind of like, like QVC. Yeah, it's I like know. QVC. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, it's like QVC. So you're going to have um, like um, uh, we're going to be on our social media. We're going to be on IG, on Instagram, uh, Facebook, IG, Facebook and YouTube. So as the women are being interviewed, like for me, like I have this great water bottle and you need to, you know, uh, buy it. And then they'll put a link and it, they'll actually they can buy it online. So they have that technology. Oh, so wow. we're excited so about that. Okay, we're cool. excited about that because not only are you going to be able to sell there, you're going <coughs> to be able to live sell online to other people that have could not come to the festival, which, by the way, we need to promote that for like people in New York or in Texas, because we have had people come to the festival from uh, different other places. Yeah. And yeah. they go, why aren't you coming to Chicago? Ooh. Come to Miami, come to... So, okay. you know, that's another vision that we have. But for right now, they can just tune in. Yeah. And we have people, like, about four or five vendors that are coming out from out of state. Mm -hmm. So when do they need to tune in? Yes. Oh, March 25th, uh, the day of the festival. March 24th? Excuse 24th. me. Yeah. <laughs> I only know because it's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> you can say it again. Say it again. Yes. Uh, they'll have to tune in. They will have to tune in on March 24th, the day of Latina Fest. And there, there'll be a schedule uh, on our website so they could see when the live sales happen. But there, there's going to be, I mean, there's 15 women that are going to be selling. So there's going to be opportunity for you to watch all of them or some of them. So that's latinafest.com, March 24th. The day of the event, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific time. Check your local calendars. Make all the zone time zone conversions you need to. Be by your computer, your tablet, your iPhone, <laughs> whatever you need to do. Memorize your credit card, PayPal, <laughs> Apple Pay. Be ready. Oh That's right. God. Thank you. That's in a nutshell. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> we are so excited to be there. We're looking forward to be part of this. This is, you know, so special. I'm, I'm glad to be. This is my first year. I may not be my last, so I'm looking forward Let's to Let's talk you guys. about the media panel, though. Yes. And why it's important. Go yeah. ahead. Yes. Take Belle it. mentioned earlier that Jovi and I are going to be there. We're Yay. very excited. <laughs> I'll be moderating the media panel. Jovi's going to be a panelist. We also have um, Lina Lacaro. Lacaro. Yeah. And we added. Well, we're still, it's not confirmed, but okay, another so we have person. another TBD. Yeah. But <clears throat> Lina Lacaro, she was um, like, an editor over at LA Weekly, and now she is the senior editor at LA Magazine. 
So mm-hmm. like she went, to, and and you know what's important to make that distinction because for a long time we were not present in media. I mean, the one magazine that was out there was his uh, Hispanic magazine, Hispanic business, and I don't even Latina. know if you were, if you and Latina, Latina magazine. and and Latina. And I don't know if you you guys remember all those magazines, yeah. but they were around. But it was very, I mean, Latina was for everybody, right? And and uh, Hispanic, again, for everybody. And it's hard, and it was a monthly, but it was hard to cover everybody. And, of course, you know, there wasn't a focus on Latinas. So it's it's important that we have representation in media because there's so many of us, so many stories, so many, uh, uh, like, success stories that where where are we reading that? You know, now you have <coughs> some, you have the laws in, in the LA Times, and now you have other magazines like Me Too that's doing a lot, and then Calo News, and then Wafi, yeah. you know. So now we're telling our we're telling our own stories. And that's why it's important for us because like for instance, I'll give you an example. Um, they canceled um, this fool. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh my God! Don't even. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's a whole topic a, on one of the there's shows. There's a campaign to hopefully survive it, but so yes. so when uh, Eugenio Derbez's producer on social media said, "Why did they do this?" It had 100 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and his summation was that not enough people um, uh, critiqued it, not enough critics wrote mm. about it, and that the the streamer said, "Well, you know, nobody's nobody's really watching it because we don't have any critical acclaim." Who, why why are those people not paying attention to Latino product? Mm-hmm. Why are they not reviewing it? Mm-hmm. That's why we mm-hmm. need our media because we know what we like and yeah. we have to get out there and promote our our projects. We have to promote our people, our politicians, whatever the 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 uh, uh, focus of the media company is. Because yes, you know that's where we we need to we need to promote and that's why you know Hollywood is a very like closed insular thing and they love you know if your friend is uh, uh steven spielberg even if he did a turkey yeah they'll go fantastic <laughs> he needs an oscar <laughs> that's what they do and we have we have to do that because they're we not paying to attention to us too. exactly yes. we i've been having this conversation i'm the co-chair of the latina alum conference for my undergrad and we're like, okay, does the college pay attention to us? Like, how, how do we get the funding? How do we do this? And it's like, no, like, we need to uplift. We need to showcase the talent that has come from our graduates because we're there. We have the plastic surgeons. We have the authors. We have the lawyers. We have the teachers. We have the homesteaders. We have we have it all, like businesswomen, and we don't know ourselves. And, and a lot of times, too, I think we've gone as – Latinas through this process of who identifies, who doesn't, if uh, th- they didn't when they were younger, but they do now, and now their children are getting into their identity. There's a lot of uh, um, going back, you know, ancestry, and oh, yeah. I, I am, yeah. and I didn't know, and, and it's really, really important that we let people know, because I've come across comments, well, why do we need the list of like 100 celebrities you didn't know were Latino, or you didn't know were Afro-Latino, or... I go, because if I know that people are in these places, I mean, I watched General Hospital for eons <laughs> and didn't know that one of my favorite characters Bernard. was from Whittier. Oh, no, no, wow. Maurice. Oh, I knew Maurice. I, yeah, no, I know Maurice on deck. <clears throat> no, I want to say it was Kimberly McCullough. Mm. That she was, oh, yeah, my mom, used, I was in Whittier and we used to come down. And I, and I remember watching State of Mind and thinking, what? You... I had I was watching a Latina my entire oh, childhood and I didn't know, but it's because well, what about Wonder Woman? She was Latina. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I know Dana about Carter. her. Too. Yes. Yes. <laughs> what about Will I Am? He went to Roosevelt, my yes. high school. Yes. he went to my high school. Yes, and he was on on the uh, a radio with a uh, big boy, and he was mm-hmm. talking about how he went to do the halftime for for um, Roosevelt because there's a classic Roosevelt High School mm-hmm. and Garfield High School. Oh yeah, every year rivalry. there's this big rivalry. Oh, yeah. And so he went to Roosevelt and he said, I did the Super Bowl. I was there and I performed. He goes, but when it came to performing at the Classic, and he got emotional. He got mm. emotional. He said, "That those are my people. Mm-hmm. I was so happy to be there. <laughs> and I'm like, I never knew he went to Roosevelt, you know, because I went to Roosevelt. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you need to know things. Yeah, Like, for instance, I understand, especially in, in you know, back in the day where people didn't want to say they were Latino because 
Well, what did you see on Even TV? Marilyn Monroe was not allowed to say that she was Latina. Who? She had Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. Yes. And 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 but when you see nothing but negative <coughs> things about Latinos, you kind of don't want to say I am associated with them, even though you are. And your parents would tell you, don't speak Spanish. You change your name. Right. So right. you know now that that things are looking more positive about us, they're coming out of the woodwork. You know, like for instance, um, uh, what's her name? Um, uh, we invited Je uh, Jessica Alba. Oh, yeah. There was times where she said, I'm not a Latina. And now you yeah, hear it, she's a Latina. Right. And that's great. But I understand where some of them were coming from. You know, they thought that if you said <coughs> something, especially actresses, that you were going to be blackballed. That's why Latinas Acting Up, the group that was started yeah. during the strike yeah. uh, for a, a SAG for the actors, is so important because Latinas are speaking out. Actresses are speaking out. Before, you you didn't say anything because you didn't want to get blackballed. And even to the point of, like, Melissa Barrera. You remember yes. Melissa? Yeah. Because she said, and, like, she goes, I don't care. You know, now we're ballsy. Uh, women across, you know, yeah. the board. But Latinas in particular. I, I'm so proud. Like, Gina Torres, Lisa Vidal, and, and Diana. <laughs> I mean. I'm like, I'm so many. I mean, even Ilia Calderon, one of the anchors, she came out with a book not too long ago, well, about three years ago, you know. <coughs> and the title of the book is, it's my turn. Yeah. You know, it's right. my turn to speak. So we have had this space now to speak up. And it's not, not it's like, we're not. You just you just want to say what we went through as an experience. It's yeah. not attacking anyone. No, it's just saying this is what happened to us because we were unseen. Basically, right. that's what it was. You and know. Yeah, and also I've worked in media all my life, mm -hmm. pretty much, and it's so important for us to be in these newsrooms because a lot of times the bosses are not Latino; they're white, right? Yeah. So when they when they send you as a reporter to cover a story. As a Latina, you could have that add that niche and that sensitivity of like, oh, you know, whatever whatever the story the may be. The perspective. The perspective, the Latino perspective, or maybe even shine a light on, hey, are we paying attention to this, right? Yes. Something mm -hmm. that's not stereotypical, something that's, you know, why are we not, for example, the fact that Latinas are creating businesses faster and than Jeez. any other group. Who's going to do a story on that? Like, a Latina right. will be the advocate for those types of stories. And, right? even, and even, if they, mm -hmm. even if somebody does that story, the perspective of, of someone doing that story that doesn't know anything about the community and doesn't understand why things happen, as opposed to someone who understands the community, that's a different article right mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Yes. Because they, yes. may, they may do like something like very like critical or of it. Surface, or very on surface. Or surface. Yeah. Yeah. Very light. Or right. even sometimes downright <laughs> racist. <laughs> <laughs> or a lot Let's of call it. Let's call yeah. it. Yeah. Or or that's what it is. The stories yeah. are also relegated to like the Latino section or the Latino yeah. segment. And which is why I think it's fantastic that Latina Fest is happening in March because I feel like September 15th to October 15th, all of a sudden it's like Latino Heritage Month. That's and like right. Everyone's that's doing something. Yeah. Everything is up to <laughs> Right. And it's like, you know, we're Latinos 365. It's the same argument for Black History Month, right? Yes, yes. We're Black 365, right? And so <clears throat> to be able to do Latina Fest in a different month, although it is International Women's History Month, so that's a great <laughs> month to have right. it too. <laughs> but, but that's one of the reasons why we switched it too, because to me, uh, a month is like they try to jam everything, everything. and well, I you call it that October was overloaded and I, uh, yeah from September 17th to October 17th mm -hmm. it's that's his, his Hispanic her his heritage month I call it Hispanic hysterical month <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> you go crazy trying to like do everything oh now I gotta go to this now I gotta go to that so we decided you know we're about women so we decided to move it to to March but um, I don't know. It's kind of cold. <laughs> We're thinking of maybe moving it to May because it's rains indoor in March. Once, instead of having an outdoor? No, in no. May. In May? Yeah, like, no, doing yeah, it outdoors. the weather will be better in May. May. Yeah. But see, okay. Th but You're this thinking. is, this okay. is a We're climate thinking. change Assessing. thing because yeah. we yes, used to it is not a have to have a Thank plan you. B. <laughs> Growing <laughs> up here, we, didn't ne we never had a plan B. This like, oh, it might rain in March. When? Yeah. That, no, that <laughs> that's <laughs> it was climate always, change is real. The, people yeah. knew that California was always sunny, and that's the way All I remember right. it. But I, we have to like like switch our our minds I because mean. now it's it's not it's climate change. Yes. Yeah. But so we're thinking, and maybe you can chime in. Um, we're thinking of moving it to May. 
No. Because May, the chance of it raining is not that much as opposed to March. And it's not and quite graduation also, season yet. And then you have Mother's Day and yeah, you have Cinco right. de Mayo and, and maybe we could switch that Cinco de Mayo is not Drinco de Mayo. <laughs> maybe we could switch people's <laughs> mind yes. that it's about celebrating Latinas. Yes. <laughs> anyway, we're just thinking about that. We'll see. Well, yeah. yeah, because there's, well, also Latin American Mother's Day is a different day as well. So it, it makes sense. In May, right? Most yeah. countries celebrate it in May. Mother's yeah. Day, yes. But March, like May 10th is like, in Latin America, no? Yeah. Yeah. And then the U.S. With the exception celebrates of Panama. Like a third. <laughs> yeah, I think DR is Panama, a what is Panama? Um, Panama celebrates Mother's Day actually December 8. Oh, oh really? Wow. Yeah, and it goes yeah. more with uh, also very similar. We've, we've, we were part of Gran Colombia, and they have uh, La Ceremonia de las Velitas. Yes. Around that time. Yes. Y La Virgen de Maria. So that's kind of how that goes. Hmm. That's but we're just kicking that around. We don't yeah. know if we're going to do that. But. I am going to pitch, though. <laughs> <laughs> just, I think as a request, only because I've been following her like crazy. And I don't even eat her food because I, I don't do gluten or sugar. But it's just so beautiful. And I think it's such a work of art. Is uh, Alexandra Lourdes out of um, Vegas, St. Honoré. Well, she also has Cafe Lola, and she has all sorts of other things, which she's not sponsoring this. I'm just a fanatic as of late. <laughs> but she does these beautiful donuts and oh, does wow. pizza. Ooh. If you don't follow her, I mean, if she were at Latina Fest 2025, I mean. Uh. <laughs> have, you, have you heard of Jenny Martinez? The Happy Bellies on, on IG and um, on TikTok, she has like 3 million followers. And then on uh, IG, she has like 780. But like I tell this story because we've invited her to be there and she so far she says she's going to be there and you know hopefully it's 90% confirmed and okay. hopefully she does but we met her at the screening of Flaming Hot. Oh. She was there and we got there really early so a, a of uh, my friends and, and them, th her and another influencer with their husbands, we all went to sit at this restaurant to wait for, you know, the premiere to start. And we were talking and, and then go, what do you do? She goes, oh, I'm an influencer. She goes, oh, really? Who are you? And then we're like <laughs> looking. And then, and then we go, oh, that's so cool. I said, have you thought about like hooking up with celebrities? And she goes, oh, yeah, Mario calls me all the time. And <laughs> so and so and so and so. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then we said something about, and she says, she has a cooking. That's what she does. She cooks. And I'm like, oh, that's great. You Maybe you have, have people reached out so that you can sponsor or promote their cookware. And she goes, no, I want my own cookware. There you go. Uh. Anyway, long story short, she's got her own cookware. It sells at JCPenney's. It's called Mesa Mia. She she's always already collaborating with, you know, she she's already collaborating with the celebrities. Nice. She's an author. And she's like she's doing all author? this. She's an author. Oh wow! Simon and Schuster. Oh wow! Oh, wow. Maybe Simon she can be on Schuster. my. Oh. Maybe she can be on my author <laughs> panel. <laughs> okay. yeah, we, yeah, have yeah. A, we have an author panel. Yes. Yes. So anyway, yeah. we can talk. No, to no, you. no. But go ahead about the author. But, so uh, that's because all. Because you I'm have saying. something coming. Oh, you're writing a book, right? I have a also? I have a bilingual children's book publishing company. Mm -hmm. So I have like eleven books that I've published. And we're going to have, and because I love books and I love authors and I feel like authors also need to be amplified yeah, and to have platforms, mm -hmm. we created the Authors Corner where we have children's authors and adult authors. And that's been really, really successful and a big draw. And it just, I love seeing authors like yeah. having a platform, but we're also going to have a separate authors panel where we're going to talk to Gigi, um, I forgot her last name. Gigi Sorry. Gonzalez. Oh, Gigi Gonzalez. She just published a book called Cultura and Cash. And oh, it's yeah. all about. She's been around, yes. Yeah, it's all about Financial like. Financial literacy. Right. Intelligence. But through the lens of Latina, mm -hmm. being a Latina. And then Alejandra Campoverde, who used to work at the White House mm -hmm. under President Barack Obama, um, I believe. Sorry, I'm still doing my research. <laughs> <laughs> and so she just came up with a memoir of like her trials and tribulations as a successful Latina in media and in politics, et cetera. So, and I'm moderating that panel because I'm an author as well. So yeah, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how the timing so, works So out. it's just exciting that all these the women are like going to be there. Hopefully Jenny will be there, but the, uh, the, what I was trying to say with Jenny is that I think that's where we're, uh, we're at all of us as Latinas. It's mm -hmm. like, Oh wow. Oh no, no. I want my own thing. Yeah. I'm not yeah. gonna, you know, and we're not afraid to say it anymore. Where before it was like, well, you 
I don't know, maybe I can do this. Okay. No, I'm going to do this. Yes. So yes. that's amazing. I, and that's a kind of inspiration <coughs> that we love having at Latina Fest because mm -hmm. young women will be there and they'll catch on to this and they'll hook on to this and they'll say, she did it, I can do it. Now, we also know that um, our comunidad is known for loving freebies, you know, <laughs> souvenirs. You go to Quinceañera, todos los recuerdos desaparecen. So are there going to be any giveaways at Latina Fest? Yes. Yes. Well, first of all, we have a swag bag that we're go <laughs> that uh, is, you know, uh, going to be there for our uh, guests, uh, our VIP, the speakers. Because, you know, they're doing this for free. The speakers are not so charging you. So you guys will get one. Yes. Yay. There's a lot of beauty <laughs> products. <laughs> and, 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 you know, it's, it's like... We don't have the monies to pay, but so we want to, you know, do uh, as much as we can. But there'll be freebies. There'll be raffles. Oh, and, and the other thing that we want to talk about is the fashion show. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh my God. So we do a fashion show every year. And one of our vendors, one of our partners, is her name is Diana Diaz. And she's been doing the festival, like, for the past three three years. This year, there, there was – and the, fa the fashion show – not the festival. The fashion show – it's geared so that our vendors can give us their items and some of them get to be in the fashion show and they get, you know, they get <coughs> visibility. But this year, a woman by the name of Carolina Hernandez, she reached out to us. She's a veteran and she has a, a fashion design uh, company or a fashion line called uh, Veteran Couture. Mm. And so she's going to put the show together. Again, we're going to get items from our vendors, you know, so that they their items can be um, used. Modeled. But mm -hmm. but her clothing is going to be featured. Mm -hmm. And so now we have the element of bringing in the Latina vet veterans, you know, the yes. Latina military. And yeah. they're out there doing some amazing things. And I want to point out that what uh, what she did is, like, exemplify something I've learned as far as doing and producing Latina Fest, that if you want an opportunity, you have to be aggressive and yes. you have to ask for it. So Carolina reached out to us. Flor Campos, who's an amazing activist, super young, and she's feeding thousands of farm workers every month as a young, and she's going to be on the disruptor panel. She reached out to us last year just talking about her mission. There's uh, so many examples of people that are Latinas that have reached out to us that, that are saying, I, I want to, sh I'm shooting my shot, so to speak. This is what I can offer. This is what I can do. And we've given them those opportunities. And it's made me grow as a woman, as an entrepreneur, saying, these women have the, the ovarios to be <laughs> like, I want to do this. And they took the initiative. Yeah. And they got the opportunity. I'm going to do that, too, in other aspects of my life. So I'm learning from these women just as much as they're learning from Latina Fest. Mm -hmm. What does being Latina mean to you? Um, being Latina means power. It means that I'm steadfast in what I want to do. It means I don't quit. And I got that from my mom. My mom, you know, was such a, an amazing woman. It's we don't quit. If we have a passion, we go for it. And no nos damos por vencidas. Never. That's what being a Latina is. And being proud of who I am. Because I wasn't always proud of who I am because I never saw myself on TV. But now it's like I'm like showing it all over. And I think we're there. A lot of Latinas are like, this is who I am. And everybody wants to be Latina nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> so to me, being a Latina is home. And also... We are a mix of everything. You know, I, I did my DNA test, and I have everything you can imagine. I even have Jewish. I have African. I have Middle Eastern, Caucasian. I have um, even Indian, believe it or not, like from India. Colonization. <laughs> Colonization. <laughs> yeah. So can, we have the best of all worlds in our DNA. All of our ancestors mm -hmm. that traveled all over the world and picked up all of these cool traditions and origins and and like developed as a species it's within mm -hmm, us mm -hmm. and sometimes we don't tap into that it's so deep in our dna so i'm proud of being part of that raza cosmica yes. like uh, like <laughs> a famous you know. mexican philosopher said or yeah or author. a singer i think or i don't know Why? but it's a great <laughs> saying yeah raza cosmica. <laughs> as a successful latina business owner what advice would you give aspiring Latinas entrepreneurs? The advice I would give aspiring Latina entrepreneurs is to really not give up. If you find something that you're truly passionate about, you can do it. If there's been people that have created amazing companies out of their garages, 
we can do that too. Just believe in yourself. Yeah, and I think also that don't be afraid to ask for help. I think mm -hmm. that, that um, women feel like, oh, I'm not doing good and I'm just a little small potato you know, business. You never know who's going to lend a hand or who's going to be connecting you to someone. So go for it. You know, just ask someone. I, people want to help. You know, especially yeah. if they see you're doing well, they want to give you a helping hand. And, and so don't be afraid to ask for it. I do. I think at fault. I feel like sometimes we minimize ourselves inadvertently because somewhere along the way they tell us, oh, be humble or, you know, no preguntes mucho, te da pena. And it's like, no, but if you don't ask, you know. I think we're still mouths don't get fed. <laughs> yeah. I, and I think that we're still carrying a lot, especially like our generation is still carrying a lot of that be grateful mentality. Oh, yeah, be humble. Like, and, like, and, and, and for example, my family, we there was never fear of deportation, but we still lived through that, as in be grateful. Even though my parents spoke up, advocated for me and everything, there was still a, but there's still someone in line who will take your job if you don't act right mm -hmm. type of thing. And I feel like in entrepreneurship, it's a different mindset and to be able to get into I have to go for what I want pesele a quien le pese and yeah. if no one in my circle believes in me we'll get a new circle <laughs> <laughs> totally <laughs> but sometimes yes. that circle is your family so how do you like extra engage right from mm -hmm. your family when so yeah. I absolutely believe like why these events why forming these connections are really important because mas alguien mas alguien va a estar ahí Oh, you know what? I know Fulanito, or like I know my me feel everything else that exactly. we do for all the other things in our yeah. lives. Yeah, will will hold true. And you know, it, our families, we grow up. You know, I don't brag about yourself. You know, don't be be yes, be humble. That's true. And for an entrepreneur, you have to sell yourself all the time. That's what grants are for. That's when you're when you're pitching. That's when you go for a loan. You always have to sell yourself. So don't be shy about selling yourself. And uh, it, it doesn't do our business any good for us not to speak up and brag about ourselves. If we don't brag about ourselves, who's going to brag about us, you know? If we don't convince the person that we are that business that deserves that loan or that grant, we're the only ones that could do that. So don't be shy. Mm -hmm. Put yourself out there. And also have the audacity to do it. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like a lot of our familia is like, be safe, mija, you know? do a career that's safe and you can but at the same time do your entrepreneurship on the side while you you know you get you gain momentum if you're scared mm -hmm. i'm not saying like quit your job and blah 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 but have the, have the audacity to believe in yourself and in your dreams yeah because you get into the projection of limited thinking mm -hmm. or limited possibilities or because i don't see it why you should you and right. it's like can I just try? <laughs> you right. know, uh, before, uh, as I was growing up, I think oh, I'm older than all of you here. Not together, but all of you. <laughs> 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 but but um, when when I was coming up, it was I, I used to be an actress. And I would never say I did anything else but an actress, even though I had to go get a job because the acting jobs don't come that often. So I had to go be a legal secretary. I had to go do this and all. But I couldn't, it wasn't popular to say that you did two things. Mm -hmm. And nowadays... Oh, yeah. It's it's fine yeah. to say I'm a businesswoman. Oh, but I also I, I have uh, Latina Fest and I also have my media company and Naive. I am a publisher, but I also have like so now it's a good thing to do that. And you never know where life is going to take you. Like I think about my career. I started off as a dancer. Then I was an actress and then I became a journalist and then I became a producer. And now we're producing events, this event. And when I think about my life, when I was a kid, I used to produce little festivals in my backyard. Mm. So that producing was always there. But I, it took me all of this to like all really that experience. Yeah. You know, so so use your experience and it'll take you to, you know, your yes. passion and it'll take you to your success. And I want to really add that the power to manifest whatever we want is truly within us. And. I'm going to use JLo as an example, and I always use her as an example in my own head. Yeah, she's maybe not the greatest actress, maybe she's not the greatest singer, but she created her, her, her persona. She worked out to create the body she wanted. She, you know, got the fashion she wanted. She made herself up to be this beautiful icon. She made the money. Now she 
spent $20 million to do this movie, this musical movie out of her own pocket. That is, she's a self-made woman and she created that from believing in herself. And right. still a lot of people don't believe in her and she doesn't care. She still does it. So we have to have that type of mentality. Yeah, I think I think I, I totally agree with you. It's mm -hmm. like she put nobody in Hollywood puts up their own money to do their projects. That's like a no no. Yeah. And she wanted this so bad. And that's why a lot of Latinos, they don't do their projects because they go to the studios and the studios go, no, I don't want to do that. And so they go, oh, OK. But yep. luckily she had the money and she said, I'm going to do it anyway. Because they, because they didn't get it because they didn't get it. They didn't get her uh, what her vision was. And then once she did it, it's like, oh, yeah, we get it we now. Because be Hollywood is like the, the, the green lighters are like they know what they know. And sometimes they miss out on things the because they don't know. The green lighters are the gatekeepers. Yeah. <laughs> the green lighters are the gatekeepers. Yeah. Bottom line, clearly, you know where you need to be on March 24th from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. All the information is going to be in our show notes. For those that are attending, Jovi and I are delighted that we'll be part of the media panel here at Latina Fest. Be there or be square. No need for FOMO since you'll be there. And it's going to be your birthday. So basically, <laughs> Latina Fest is your birthday party. Yeah! <laughs> it's and I didn't pay a dime. I know. <laughs> That's Latina way it's to your, do it. your sponsored birthday party. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> also, remember to go to latinafest.com. All this information will be there. Uh, we're putting up all of the schedules pretty soon by end of next week. And we have um, all the information that you need there. So latinafest.com. Yay. Well, thank you for having ladies. All right, everyone. We hope that you enjoy this show with Naive and Belle. And you can watch the interview on all stream platforms. And remember to follow us at Todo Wafi and at Todo Latino Show from Pro Audio LA Studios. I am Joby D. That's Cosmo Latina. That's Belle. And that's Naive. And we are out. <laughs>